If you've been in the arena lately, you could see that Control is trying to take down the big behemoth reanimator deck, right? This deck has to be taken down and Control has to be the one to do it. But I've noticed something. A lot of people do not play Control correctly. They're trying to counter the wrong things. They're trying to do too much, do too little at the same exact time. And this video is dedicated to how exactly you want to play a control deck. I'm going to tell you a couple of things about this deck and why certain elements are here and why they are actually more important than you would originally think. And then we're going to jump into a match and we're going to explain kind of step by step the thought process I use when going into these matches. As you can see with this deck, uh, I'm going to call this a decently budget way to play magic if you're playing control because you get your pieces you get really good pieces lined up and then you don't have to worry about new sets coming out at all as you can see uh phyrexia all will be one came out a little bit ago march of the machine is the current set that's popular it's the newest one but we don't have any of those pieces we have none of them they didn't have any good lands first use and um, yeah, we, we don't have any of them. We have mostly cheap stuff in the beginning and our closers are gonna be rares. Our land base is gonna be expensive as well, but you don't really have to worry about new cards until something beats something you have. I do wanna make a mention that we are running Fable of the Mirror Breaker because it's very good and it is not illegal yet. And other people are gonna be playing Fable of the Mirror Breaker. It's gonna be in there. So we might as well play the best card. Now, what do I have in this deck that I really want to talk about? I really want to talk about Depopulate. I could have put Sunfall in here, which is Exile All Creatures, Incubate X, but that's a little bit too slow for us. If we're going up against somebody who really quickly gets a bunch of creatures out on the field, we have to Depopulate, right? So that's why this is better than Sunfall, because Sunfall costs five. Make Disappear is very weak in this deck. The reason I have it in here is it's a jack of all trades, master of none. Um, we could get rid of a farewell if they try to play it on turn three. Most of the time, if we have it in our hand, it works. And sometimes people run into Make Disappears for two. But we don't really have anything we want to sacrifice early game. Later on in the game, we might. And spells are so expensive right now in the mid-range game or decks that we could probably find an okay target for it. It is not my favorite, but we don't want to run four negates in the opening hand. We do want to run four negates though because of the reanimator spells. And I actually think that we want to add a couple of counter target creature spells in here. And we're going to add those to the sideboard in just a moment. All right, next is our draw power. Impulse and Memory Deluge. Bankbuster, I would not run in this deck because you only get to draw the top card of your library at a time. This allows us to look at the top four, put the best answer into your hand. Control is trying to answer questions. The opponent is going to play a creature or an enchantment or a, um, what would you call it, an artifact. And you have to have an answer for that. And Impulse is going to help you get to those answers. If you need to get land out onto the battlefield, we have five colors of mana that we run in this deck. So chances are we're not going to have all of them. So we Impulse to try to get that other color of land as well. Memory Deluge is very good at doing this as well. But you get to put two cards into you, your hand. And then you get to cast it with Flashback for seven. That's why we run this. Because we get to look at, with running four copies of this and three copies of Impulse, in a long, prolonged game, we get to see every card in our deck. We will easily see every card in our deck by the time it's done if it is a very long game. You know what that means? We get to our finisher. We only have one clear way to win these matches, and that is a Traxa Grand Unifier because it is also a good control piece. You get to refill your hands with one of each type of everything that exists in Magic, or so it seems. Yeah, go from two cards up to six, pretty solid. Not only do we get to refill our hands, we also get a Flying Vigilance Death Touch Lifelink 7-7 on the field. It's really nice for a control build. Midrange is playing it a lot, but this I think is intended to be a control piece. Now, 
Let's also look at one card over in our land base. We have Field of Ruin. Why? Well, because a constant value from Murix is very dangerous for us. And we are going to basic check a lot of opponents going through these matches. And not only that is we have one of each of the basics in here besides the island. There we go. Right. Now we have properly one of each mana source. That is a basic. And Field of Ruin not only goes down and gets one of these for us, it also destroys a non-basic land from the opponent. So it's a two-fold reason to have Field of Ruin in here. Sideboard. Let's talk about a few cards in here like the Stone Brain. If they're doing reanimator decks and we see their reanimation card, we could Stone Brain that and exile that card and it's gone. Lord of the Third Path deals with artifacts and enchantments. If they get Fable of the Mirror Breaker down, we can Lord of the Third Path and get rid of it that way. Fable Absence deals with Planeswalkers. Dreams of Steel and Oil deals with Graveyards themselves. And Brotherhood's End deals with Aggro. There is one thing I do want to add to the sideboard, but it's hard to know what to cut. I think a cut down should be cut. And we are actually going to add a counter for creatures. They're, they're creatures are very expensive so counter target spell so we're going to put devious cover-ups in here yeah because i think it exiles it too yeah it exiles it and you get to put four cards for your graveyard into your library that's probably going to do wonders for this deck but that's the reason why some of these cards are in here i thought that was important to go over especially driving home the point that we are trying to look at every card in our deck and find our finishers and end the game. Now let's get into a match and see exactly how this plays. With the opening hand, we're mostly worried about our land base. We know we're gonna draw answers, but we don't know what questions the opponent's gonna ask us. We don't have any counters. We don't have any way to early draw cards early. We have a seven drop in hand, which is not great, and a go for a throat. But we do have a triome. We got red, blue, black. But those are up oh, and a green. I will keep this, but I will hesitate to say that it is a good hand to keep. Tapped land. We draw land. Or Besaju, I should say. It's a special land. We see the opponent plays Gruel Battle Deck. Well, this is going to be a hard one to really beat. So we need a lot of removal for creatures. That's what we know now. We have the invasion of Ergamon, and he's going to want to start flipping this stuff. There's a the first creature. Immediately remove that. We don't want him ramping. White. Awesome. And we are almost to the point where we could start digging through our library. I want to do that a little bit later, though. The longer we can wait on that, the better we get our own fable. Now, we could play that fable. And let's see. He has the leveler here. So we're going to... We do have an answer with that with the Boseju. Unearth. So... That costs eight. We want to remember that he has that, the leveler, because we want to use a brainstone on that. We definitely want to use like a brainstone or something like that on that card. One, two, three, four, five. So he flips his reflections. I'm not worried about that. I'm worried about this leveler though. And as he goes to my turn, he's not doing anything else. So we're going to memory deluge here and find a. Farewell is not good for us. Depopulate probably isn't what we want either, but a farewell looks really good. And if we have to choose a second card, we will choose Leyland Binding. Another white. And we could probably get away with a Fable here. And he's still behind on mana to cast a leveler. So we play our own Fable of the Mirror Breaker. We see no blues, so no reason to think that he has any counters in his deck. And we pass. That's fine. 
He destroys my uh, tutu, my gabo. We don't get the ramp, which is not great. Six, seven. Next turn, he could cast a leveler. And I think that that's really what he's going to try to do. But uh, we're going to make sure that that doesn't happen. Go to my turn. Draws another card. If you notice, he is down to three cards. He's got plenty of basics. Do we have the lands that we need? We got the red, we got the green, we got the black, the white, and the blue. So we could discard Field of Ruins, and we could probably discard uh, ba -ba a Leyland Binding. Don't like to discard that, but hey, that's pretty good. That is pretty good. Now that he's going to do this next turn, we got to get rid of this stuff now. And there's no reason to think that he has any kind of um, counters. So we're going to exile all creatures, exile all graveyards. So his game plan is officially not going to work. Yeah, sure, we exiled our memory deluge. Uh, Tally, that's pretty good, man. That is pretty good. He gets our Wandering Emperor into another Atali. That's very good. Then guide it like water. What did he get from us? A Make Disappear. Okay. It's fine. We just activated hard mode. One one counter. Okay. Show them how we greet our Let's enemies. get our fable rolling here. And I want to see. Choose this as a blue. And green. Nah, undo that. Blue. It's impulse. I want a board wipe. We did not find that answer. We did find another attract, so we found a go for the throat. We don't want him discarding and drawing. So we go for the throat or Boseju here. We're gonna do that this turn. Ten, huh? Interesting. I'm gonna lay limb binding right now on the Wandering Emperor. Get that off of the field. That's that. And it looks like we're taking some damage this turn. He's probably flipping some of this stuff. We need to find sweepers. We have four in the deck. Flip that awfully fast. We're gonna take nine poison counters? Man, that is so brutal. So brutal. Okay, so we know Atali is in this deck and he got that second Atali. Three Atalis. We can't kill that now. We can't board wipe out of it. So we lost this round. Okay, so we lost the first round. We could keep it going for a little while, but it ain't going to work. Did he hard cast that? I think he did. He did. That's literally like all that he did except for the portal. Or he has portals, that stuff. So he's got a lot of things. He's got a big boy deck. Faithful Absence has come in. These come in. Devious cover-ups come in. Stone Brain comes in. The reason is, Stone Brain, we could exile Atali. We want Atali off of the field. If he can't dig further, then we're doing good. Cut downs completely, not, not completely worthless, but they're more worthless than uh, they otherwise would be. Leyland Binding, go down to two of those. Faithful Absence will go down one. Make this appear, we'll drop both of these. We're going to keep the two negates because he does have fable. Actually, gate, make it three negates. Go down a wandering emperor. 
We definitely want the two farewells. Go down and Atraxa as well. We want all four fables. Yeah, this kills artifacts and enchantments. Huh, do we really need five destroy creatures? And I think the answer is yes. So we go down one impulse. Therefore, we're able to exile either a portal to Phyrexia or an Atali. We are able to wipe boards still. We're able to destroy more things with Fateful Absence because he's going to have not or, or, or artifact creatures. So go for the throat, ain't going to hit him. All right, it's giving us a rope. Let's go. The way you want to start off round two is, of course, by playing first. But do we have answers to things? We have answer for the fable. We have a depopulate in hand. We have one, two, white. Uh, we have our blue, 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 actually. And a green to back it up. I don't mind this. This is not bad. Blue. Now, we're probably playing the Boseju here. Actually, we're going to play the Field of Ruin. Because we got the blue here with the Xandra's Lounge. And now we can negate... I want to negate that because he wants to have that ramp first off. He also wants to flip that as fast as he possibly can. If we don't let him have any of that stuff, we're looking pretty good. We're holding up. Go for the throw with the Xander's Lounge. Go ahead. Play your Fable. Do your worst. <clears throat> we also have an answer to the Fable with Depopulate. Impulse. Okay. And uh, we don't have to do anything here. We're just chilling. That was his big money play right there. Stomper, huh? Do we want to find a way to get rid of that? Do We don't have a way to get rid of that right now. We do have a depopulate, but I'm fine with that sitting on the board for a while. Yeah, only react when you have to. Five. Okay, my turn. Deluge. We get an Atraxa here. We get Devious Cover-Up. We definitely want the Devious Cover-Up. And I think we go for a track. So we have mana in hand. I'm really glad that we did that because it pushes that stuff to the bottom. And we need lands for turn. Okay, cool. We put a land down and we pass to the opponent. We always want to play a land. Always. Looks like the opponent is passing back to us. Maybe an awkward hand. A Zayathora Proving Ground. A second devious cover up or a wandering emperor. I think we're going with. If we get emperor, we don't get land for turn. So the proving ground is better. Uh huh. Go to my turn. Go ahead and drop the brainstone. And yeah, we do not have Devious Cover-Up up, but he's only got five mana. You know what? We're going to pop this now. The Atali is going to completely murder us. Show all Atali. Primal Conqueror. Nothing in hand. We'll get a good look. A lot of things that destroy battles and only one battle in hand. Okay. There's his three Atelis. Tyrannix, Fables, Tranquil, um, Frillback. Okay. Pretty standard stuff. Just kind of ramping into a good battle deck. Really good gruel stuff from him. There's the invasion right on cue. Okay. Exile's hard to play. It's graveyard, you gain four life. Topiary Stomper can get in there and do four, which is fine. Lauren. Ugh. Did not get land for turn. He's only got basic lands as well. Okay, so we cannot pop the uh, Field of Ruin. We got all five colors. Black. Nope. Put these two back into my library. 
take the action. We have a thinner deck with spells in it now. Okay, resolve that. He gets more lands. But what are you going to do with all those lands? This is actually okay for his deck. He probably pulled that out of the sideboard after he realized I was probably doing um, shenanigans with Atrexa. Four to a face, we take it. Thought he'd go after the battles, which we would have had to respond. Destroy artifact or enchantment, exile target player's graveyard, or gain for life. Either one of those, I don't care. Oh wait, we have the memory delusion there, so I do kind of care. Hmm. You're just a dino. You're a dino too. Okay, go to my turn. Now he's starting to build up his board state a little bit. And we could do a couple of different things here. But we want to stall this game as long as we can. So we're going to depopulate here. Holding the go for the throat. He drew land. For us, I would love to draw land every turn. But for him, maybe not. We could, could exile the graveyard, but he's only got three cards down there anyway. We attract it here. He's going to kill it, but he uses a card from his hand. Which is fine by me. He's like, ha ha, gotcha. Do you now? Do you now? Stone brain. Um, land. Depopulate and the wandering emperor. Draw all five of these. Play the land. We're going to drop off both Seiju, I think. Huh, what do we want to drop? Memory Deluge. Nice card out of the graveyard anyway. There we go. What are your two cards? Fable. Okay, Fable it is. Five damage, a creature or planeswalker, huh? Lauren actually handles Fable really nicely. So we're going to just start here. Let's target this. And if you notice, in the first round, the opponent had a bit of an advantage. But now, it's time for us to start taking this game over. Do we activate this only as a sorcery? Yeah, activate only as a sorcery. So we do it now. What do we want to get rid of? Atali's gone already. Fable could be a good choice here. Fable helps him get back into the game. We don't really care about a lot of this other stuff. So we're going to ta ta tackle. We are going to target Fable of the Mirror Breaker. There it is. Awesome. Done. Cool. Library. Exile, exile, exile. And exile that for one from the graveyard as well. <clears throat> then we just pass turn. He only has one card in hand. He drew a land. Okay. Creates a treasure. And we trade off this Lauren of the Third Path here. Trade it off. The beauty of this is, is we could Wandering Emperor at any time now. Is this Creature or Planeswalker? It is. It's Creature or Planeswalker. So it would be really nice to have another Creature that we could use that on. We could pop this, and go down and get more land out, but I think that we're just memory deluging on his turn. Yep, cool. Exile target players. Graveyard is probably what he's gonna target here. Exile Graveyard. Okay, we will do this now. Look at the top seven. Go for the throat. And land drop for a turn. Looks awfully strong. And we didn't want that stuff anyway, man. You're good. Land. Go for the throat. Mostly because it's like we have to discard anyway. 
So we might as well try to get as much bang for our buck as we possibly can. Kill that. It doesn't matter. We just helped him thin his deck here. <laughs> but hey, I have to discard it anyway. So do I want to discard it or do I want to, you know, pretend like we're doing something cool? I want to pretend like we're doing something cool. Opponent draws a card. We do have finisher in hand. And that's where a lot of these uh, decks go wrong. Wandering Emperor. He's going to kill it. Anyone who harms my people must But we will get a 2-2 out of it. And now he's completely defenseless. Guards, I'm never done for good. Awesome. Mana drop for turn. Always the most important part of each turn when you're playing control. Swing in and turn. Nice, simple, sweet. Stomper. Okay. Stomper is fine. He gets more land. Look at how much land he has. What are you going to do with it, though, if you don't have any cards in your hand, though? That's the thing. The thing you have to keep in mind. Memory Deluge, we're looking for our uh, finisher, and we find a couple of really nice ones. I knew they had to be coming up soon. They had to be coming up soon. Oh, we got land for turn. And now we attract Traxa, and he scoops, right? Right? Scoop? Definitely want to... No. We want Devious Cover-Up. Fable. Just like that. Just like that. Worked beautifully. So I think that... We just go again. This was a really good opponent to do this demonstration with. Yeah, I've seen a lot of people just mill themselves to death with control builds because they don't have enough of a finisher. And if it gets removed turn one or two, or turn seven or eight, they just die. We don't like to play those kind of games, though. This is going to be the first mulligan. Ouch. 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 Dump off one of the Wandering Emperors. This is a terrible hand. But we do have a Leyland Binding to try to hold us in the game. Um, Lauren seems okay, especially if he plays Fable turn three. We got Fable turn three. We get Proving Grounds down then, and then we pass. He Fables, right? Fable, you got it? Nope, he doesn't. But we do. Yes, sir. Pretty nice. He has no counters or anything. Goes down nice and smoothly for once. Battle. He gets a dig. That's fine. We get the ramp with our Gabo. Everything is tapped out. We get a negate. We are going to discard this. And that's it. Just one. Oh, yes. Memory deluge. Play. Swing. And we're actually on the offense. Awesome. More mana. Tyrannix. Rex. Can't be countered. Ward four. Haste. Trample. Toxic four. What a crazy card. It's definitely coming. And it's coming right to the face. Fine. You got it, man. Put Emperor here. Yeah, let's do this. He's tapped out. So we pay that. We're going to create a Samurai. Then... We're going to discard the negate. No, wait, wait. Ah, we weren't on Chapter 2. We were on Chapter 3. I'm getting ahead of myself. We're gonna exile this. We will pay four. See you later. Resolve. Auto pay. You're done. And we dealt with a really big threat there. And we get to hold up Leyland Binding. Whew, that's a hard card to deal with. Uh Tally, another hard card to deal with. Okay. See what he gets. He 
gets a battle on his side. He gets a negate on mine. Oh, wait, he gets a topiary stomper. I'm fine with that. Mana. We'll go to my turn. Mana for turn. Hmm. I think we're just passing. Yeah, I think we're literally just passing. Invasion! He's going to get more lands. Okay. Now, we've seen the Atalis. We've seen the Topiary Stoppers from the opponent. We've seen the Tyrannix Rex. He only has one of those in his deck, from what I saw, unless he sideboarded in more of those pieces. So he might be running out of creatures to do things with. Okay, so that's his action. We want to make a copy here. We want a Leyland Binding on the Atali. That's a pretty dangerous move. Double block Topiary Stomper. All your work. Brotherhood's end. Negate. No thank you. <laughs> that was close. He says nice. I say thanks. Yeah. This is worth it. Because, yeah, we're going to get more damage off. But we get to recreate that treasure. That mana that it costs to tap the reflections of Kiki Cheeky. And get the opponent down to 10, and we easily just pass turn right here. Opponent does have four cards in hand, though. We don't have any real way to handle that right now, so we just go ahead and do this. I mean, I guess we could have looked for a devious cover-up. He finds a stone brain and a salvo. Okay, this is all fine. We got plenty of treasures off of the reflections. We got more reflections in him. And what does he choose? Let's go ahead and get this out. Make sure he doesn't call Leyland Binding. Resolve. What's he going to call? If he calls Memory Deluge, then he's playing against control correctly. If he calls Atraxa, he's also doing really well. Okay, he called the Atraxa. So we've got to finish the opponent with Fable of the Mirror Breaker as well as, oh, what do you call it? Fable of the Mirror Breaker and Wandering Emperor. Those are now our two finishers. So we found one here and we found a good old go for the throat. Oh, let's wait. Oh, it is going to my turn. So it's perfect. Auto pay. Bam. The right call, but we do have options. Another thing, when you're playing control, always make sure you have options. I see so many people that just like, they have one finisher and if you get rid of it, they're done. Now, not only do we have tempo, we have plenty of things that we can do with the gopher throats and the memory delusions. Gopher throat does not hit the cityscape leveler though. Oh my God. That is a very good move for the opponent. We do want the Fateful Absence. We want Devious Cover Up. That sucks. What do you get? Tyrannix? He's got another one. Okay, I thought he only had the one. Got a Fateful Absence as well. He's Fateful Absence here. Of training. Doing what well. Is? Like, I gotta say, this guy's playing it very, 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 very strongly. Coming in for eight. Guess we're taking eight. Bam. Not to worry. Not to worry. Or attacks. We gotta do this one now. Okay. This is the first round, by the way, so I'm not cherry coding. I'm not picking and choosing which matches I'm playing.
We actually won. We've actually won. He needs five damage. We got five on the field. Unless he could do something here and we have a devious cover up in hand. He's going to look for the answer, but he's out of mana now. And uh, that's it. Very nice. Very well played by the opponent. Like, I, I'm very impressed with um, how he, he was trying to really limit what we were able to do. He always had a response. He, <laughs> he stone burned us. He got rid of our Atraxas. He played things with Ward. Nice big things with Ward. Atali is just very, very good. Cityscape Leveler. Haven't seen that in a long time, but he played that as well. And he played it well. The thing is, is you always have to have a response if you're the control player. There were a lot of times where we're just getting creatures off of the board, even if they're not the, the best creatures. Like whenever we got the, oh, what do you call him? The guy that ramps you, the topiary stomper. We double blocked on the topiary stomper to keep us in the game and eliminate one of his cards. You know, you're trying to reduce the opponent's hand size to zero. And he got too aggressive there and he swung too hard. He thought he could keep the Atalia alive, but we had to go for a throat in hand. So many responses to his board state and had just enough in the way of tokens to finish off the opponent. You always have to have a way to close it out. You have to have something that closes the game. And we had just enough. Even though he got rid of one of my main closers here, the Atraxa, Grand Unifier. But it, it just wasn't enough for him. Yeah, this was the first match I played today when I started recording. And I was like, you know what? I think people are playing control decks wrong. So I want to go into depth about my thinking when it comes to how to play against control decks or play with controls builds. We want to be able to play with control builds well. And if you could do that, you're going to win a lot more games. Have to have a finisher and have a backup R2. As you saw in that last round, we had to have that Fable and the Wandering Emperor. Those two cards, the tokens from them, actually did finish off the opponent. It took me a couple moments to realize that I had Fatal. But, yeah. Grand Unifier is not enough of just a closer. You do need to have backup closers. All right, I hope that this was helpful. Um, I don't know how well I did when explaining all of this stuff. There's a lot going on in these matches, but you have to remember that there are some things that are counterable, and there's other things that you could let happen. Fable is almost always counterable, but something like a Blood Tithe Harvester, you might want to let through if you just have a Make Disappear and you're worried about Fable, etc., etc., etc. It's really, you don't counter everything. You don't let everything through and you want to constantly dig into your library and only grab things into your hand that are going to help you win. Like uh, a Tracta, like go for the throats, negates, depending on what the deck is they're coming out at you, at you with, cut downs, then you might need to depopulate or a farewell. It all depends on what the opponent is doing. They have five one ones. I'm not probably grabbing the depopulate. I'm probably grabbing the Atraxa. But if they have five five fives on the board with Trample Haste and Vigilance and deals 25 poison counters to you as well as, you know, kills your mother, I'm definitely going to grab the Depopulate and wipe the board and say, let's, let's calm your roll a little bit. Yeah, it might seem like Control doesn't have the pieces it needs to win, but it does. I think I've lost with this deck once. I think I've lost with a control build once and I know I'm kind of beating a dead horse. I'm beating a dead horse whenever I, this is the third, the third time I brought this control build to YouTube and it's just because I've been playing it. This is what I've been playing because gee whiz, it, <laughs> it's hard to lose with because you just have answers to all the mid range stuff. Paper, rock, scissors, guys, paper, rock, scissors. Aggro beats control. Control beats mid-range. Mid-range beats aggro. Control beats mid-range. Well, what are we dealing with right now in the arena? Oh, yeah. The deck that I called all the mid-range. Right. This is the one. This is the deck that we're dealing with. So if you're actually trying to win right now in standard, you're probably wanting to play control. I, these videos get so many fewer views on them, the, the, the control builds. And... I don't know if it's just that people are uncomfortable with playing control, but it is literally my favorite way to play Magic. And it 
it is necessary sometimes. I like fun, flashy cards, but I also like to win. And that's why during especially this season, I'm going to be playing what a heck of a lot of control. Going to try to mix it up, mix and match some pieces in here. But uh, as it stands, this is a good baseline for what you want to do. Thank you for joining today. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope that you found it helpful, more importantly. So make sure you leave a like if you did. Leave a comment down below. Tell me how I did. Tell me what you think I messed up on. Tell me what you think I did well. Tell me if you play control or if you're just going to keep trying to grind away in the mid-range. And I am out of words. So I'm going to cut it short here. And I'll see you next time in the arena. Bye.